I left you at this stage with part 2 address, paste in the URL here. This is the solution which G oh, sorry, this is the uh, problem that GCQ have uh, posed for us. Looking immediately through the file, we notice it's called VM. And also it says reveal the solution with VM works in most browsers. This code actually here is JavaScript. It's designed to run inside a web browser. Now a VM tends to mean a virtual machine, which is kind of like a fake computer if you like. It's uh, cause the computer runs in software. Remember back to part one where we had all those instructions which the computer executes. In this case, we're going to be building the machine on which those instructions execute, simulating, if you like, uh, a real processor. Um, now, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see GCHQ's data. They've defined a, a memory here with lots of codes in it. Now, given this is a VM, it would make sense that this would, these would be the instructions. These would be the uh, opcodes, if you like, that the virtual machine is going to run. We scroll down a bit further. It says, yes, indeed, it's a virtual machine. It describes the type of memory model that's used. It's a segmented memory model with a 16 byte segment size. The processor's got four general purpose registers and two segment registers and one flag registers. One flag register. It then goes on to detail the format of the opcodes, um, what actually each one means and how you translate it into an instruction. So the first three bits of the first byte indicate what which opcodes uh, which opcode it is and then subsequently what it does. So if we look down here, here's the list of opcodes. Uh, these are the values for those first three bytes, uh, what the instruction is, There's some notes here on what the individual instructions do, how compare and jumps work, uh, how they should change the flag, uh, the, uh, flag register, etc. Essentially this is really the easiest um, task of the entire GHCQ, GCHQ uh, problem because they essentially tell you what you need to do. You need to just build a VM to interpret this data and to run this data on a, a virtual processor which you've designed. So it's simply a matter of loading this data into memory, looking at the first byte saying which opcode is it, and then performing the operation depending on which opcode it is, transferring some data, adding some numbers together, extracting some numbers, doing some comparisons or jumping, etc. etc. And then it doesn't tell us how we get the result, what the result might be. Well, looking at this, the only thing that it could possibly change is memory. So again, it looks like we'll probably have to just dump the memory contents and have a look at them. Now, I've got a virtual machine compiled in Python here, and I'm just going to take the, uh, instead of running it in JavaScript, we run it in Python. So we're going to run Python vm.py, which contains the entire code in here, plus an interpreter, which just goes and looks at each instruction, passes, and executes it. I'm going to put more on here. So you can see, looking at this, is the very first instruction. This is kind of like the same results that the disassembler we're getting in part one. So the very first instruction up here, which is the first opcode, is a move R instruction, and it moves the value four into register one, and so on and so on. So the list of commands uh, or instructions there are in there is, is, is quite numerous. We could sit down and go through each instruction, figure out what it does, write down on paper, etc. But it's going to take a rather long time. So we're just going to get Python to run through the instructions and actually execute it. And then when we get to the end, eventually, so it's quite a few. And then we just ask Python, OK, just dump the entire memory contents. And that's essentially what it's done. We've now got a dump file. And these are the contents of the memory after the virtual machine has run through all those instructions. If we open it up in the hex editor, you'll see the first part of memory contains exactly the same as this, because the code was loaded into memory. And this is where the, the virtual processor or the virtual machine started executing. If we then scroll down a bit more, we'll see the data segment with a bit of luck. And there, just like we had in the very first, the solution to the very first task, is a web address, or sorry, it's a H first line of a HTTP request to the file. Again, we're going to theorize that the location from which the file is, or the location where the file is, is on the Can You Crack It website. So let's go and put in that address right at the end. And hit enter, 
and it asks you to download an executable file which we'll solve in part 3. Essentially, this, as I said, this is very much the easiest of the three tasks. Uh, most confident undergraduates should be able to do it in a, in a few hours without too much difficulty.